Remember that none of this is financial advice. Hey, this is Zach. Welcome to Web3 Reviews. The XRB community, we've been going through it. We fought the SEC. We won. We didn't see any positive price action. Ripple gave $25 million to Trump's team. And yet Ripple can do no right. Chris Larson came out personally endorsing Kamala Harris. And everyone's up in arms. More and more people leave the XRP community every day. Jumping ship for greener pastures. Seriously, every single day you see people on Twitter saying, hey, I just sold all my XRP. To me, this means we are getting closer and closer. I've been here for seven years. At this point, nothing is going to shake me. There are some people who are saying that Ripple is going to print another 100 billion XRP and we're going to have 200 billion XRP. This is absolutely ridiculous. And then we have other people saying that Ripple is going to burn 50% of the overall supply of XRP. Now, we saw what happened when the, one of the co-founders of XRP, Jed McCaleb, who left for his own project XLM, Stellar Lumens, he did this exact thing with XLM. Now, XLM has a very similar code to XRP. Some people might say it's exactly the same. One's for retail, one is for institutions, one might say. We're not going to get too far into that. But Jed McCaleb, he helped develop XRP. He developed XLM. They had 100 billion tokens and they told people, hey, we're going to burn 50 billion tokens. We're not going to have this giant war chest like Ripple. We're just going to burn the tokens. What did this do? This lowered their overall market cap because market cap is just the amount of tokens times the price. So their market cap was cut in half and they never saw a positive uptick in price. Now, I think that Ripple holding 45 billion XRP, this is going to give them the reserves to have their own stable coin. You can't have RLUSD if you don't have money sitting in the back end to make these transactions real. It's been people's biggest problem with Tether all this time in the crypto community is that Tether seems to be running a fishy game where they're just printing tokens out of thin air and then using them to invest in Bitcoin. With that being said, I'm a big believer in XRP. I'm a big Brad Garlinghouse fan. And you have David Schwartz. You have this all-star team of people. David Schwartz, Jed McCaleb, Arthur Brito, Chris Larson, Greg Kidd. You build this team of superstars and you send them out there to pave the roadway of these next financial systems. Looking at a system that hasn't been updated since the 1600s. We're still using Novostro banks, banks with billions of dollars of cash sitting in them as strategic points around the world in case you need to move money to certain banks. And Brad Garlinghouse has talked about this openly on TV, saying that the fastest way to move money from here to China, if it's over $10,000, is on a briefcase on a plane. That's ridiculous. We're in this age where finance is going to finally truly meet the internet. Because yeah, your bank is online. You can access your bank account online. We have debit cards and credit cards. But the actual processes that everything is working on are old. They're old. Swift, that was created before email and before text messaging. And it was a messaging platform between central banks and between countries and businesses sending money between one another. XRP has a use case and we are inching closer and closer to it. The closer we get to XRP reaching its moon date, the more voices we are going to hear telling us how wrong we are. It's going to be scary. In this latest political deal, Ripple's playing both sides of the fence. You have to play both sides of the fence because you know what? What if Kamala wins? What if Gary Gensler gets appointed as the treasurer? I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that Ripple needs to survive no matter what. And Brad Garlinghouse came out and said that Ripple's not going to IPO because the SEC, they're not fun to play ball with. I don't even think they want to play ball. They just want to screw you. So it's not a fair game. And Gary Gensler's not a good guy. He's somebody who will literally say whatever you want him to say. We heard what he said when he was up teaching his little class at MIT, where he was a big expert on cryptocurrency. Then he turns around and becomes the head of the SEC and takes on Jay Clayton's lawsuit and William Hinman's lawsuit with the ETHgate and runs with it for four years. We are four years in. Now, XRP is not a security, but Ripple is still fighting the SEC. It's not over. I mean, it's just the craziest thing. And Ripple's doing things. They're opening up RLUSD. There's going to be a stable coin. Do they need XRP to use Ripple now? Ripple payments. I don't believe that Ripple would have fought for XRP to not be a security and spent a few hundred million dollars in legal fees to do so just to turn around and ditch XRP. Zach with Web3 Reviews, thank you for being with us. Until next time.